In May, we've had uh, two new treatments approved. One is a medicine called Tilaprevir, uh, which is also known as Encevic. Uh, the other medicine is Bosepravir, which is known as Victrellis. Both of these medicines act in a different way than our current therapies with interferon and ribavirin. These are what we call direct-acting antiviral agents. They're also protease inhibitors, and the protease is an enzyme of the hepatitis C virus. So these medicines directly inhibit the replication of the hepatitis C virus within the liver cells. So they work in a different way, and therefore are complementary uh, to our current therapies with interferon and ribavirin. The new, new therapies were, are important for hepatitis C, one, because there's only about 50% of patients that are uh, potential uh, successes with our current therapy. Uh, and, and there are options to significantly improve that, that response rate, which may also uh, bring more people in to be treated. Right now, because of the success rate, the poor, relatively poor treatment success rate with our current therapies, uh, and the side effects of those therapies, many people are not uh, choosing therapy at this time. These new protease inhibitors are very exciting medications uh, because their efficacy is much greater than what we've had in the past. Uh, pro a protease inhibitor such as bosepravir and tilaprevir used in conjunction with pegylated interferon and ribavirin have uh, raised our rates of sustained virologic response or what we call a cure from probably less than 50% to most, in most patients to over uh, 70 to 80%. One of the advantages of the new therapy is that there is a potential to shorten treatment duration in many more patients than we were able to do with the old current therapy of interferon and ribavirin. So as many as 50 to 60 percent of patients may actually um, be treated for just 24 or 28 weeks, um, and the rest need to be treated out to 48 weeks uh, of, of treatment duration. Uh, it depends on two main factors. One of the factors is the patient's uh, other medical problems and the disease state that they're in with the hepatitis C, so how advanced their hepatitis C is, what type of hepatitis C, the, their prior history of response to the hepatitis C, um, and the other factor is how well they're doing on therapy. So in certain patients, if they're doing very well on therapy and their viral load uh, decreases very quickly, sometimes the overall course of therapy can be truncated and in some times as short as 24 weeks. Uh, and this is a very big difference from the usual 48 weeks, we're, which we were used to in the past. We know that the side effect profile of the standard interferon and ribavirin is pretty well described. We know that interferon causes flu-like symptoms, headaches, muscle aches, fevers, chills. Ribavirin can cause anemia. Those symptoms will still be present with the new therapy. The new therapy, however, adds another level of complexity, not only in how the therapy is given, but also with the complexity in terms of the side effects. Tilaprevir, for example, causes skin rash in up to 30% of patients and, and anemia in, in some patients. Bosepravir causes anemia in up to 50% of patients uh, and a metallic taste in the mouth in, in many patients. So both have different side effect profiles uh, and those side effects are added on to those of interferon and ribavirin. So it's not necessarily an easier therapy, but the success rate we think outweighs those side effects. Uh, fortunately, these therapies are very effective in almost every patient with hepatitis C. There are a few uh, rare genotypes, uh, which we very, uh, relatively rarely see in this country, that is not effective. Uh, however, patients who uh, have never been treated, patients who have been treated and have not responded to therapy, um, or patients who have relapsed after uh, treatment, all these patients have been shown to do very well uh, with a protease inhibitor therapy. Uh, so this is a type of therapy that almost any patient who has untreated hepatitis C would potentially be a candidate for. The other thing to, to remember is that this is not a therapy that we can yet use uh, in patients who have very decompensated liver disease. If they've already gone beyond cirrhosis to where they've developed fluid retention or jaundice or bleeding, uh, those patients are not good candidates for this therapy. If they have renal failure and are on dialysis, this therapy is not yet approved for those particular individuals. If they are infected with the, hep with the AIDS virus, HIV, uh, this therapy is not uh, an approved therapy for them. And if they've had a liver transplant, 
uh, this therapy is not yet approved for those individuals. That doesn't mean we won't try to use it in some of those individuals on a very careful case-by-case -case basis, but it's not yet FDA approved for those, uh, for those indications. Yeah, patients that have been previously treated with, with interferon and ribavirin in the past are candidates for this therapy. And in some, uh, uh, in some sense, those are sometimes the best patients for this particular therapy because the, the improvement in response over what they could expect with standard interferon and ribavirin is the most dramatic in those that have been previously treated. The best group of previously treated patients uh, to retreat with the new therapies are the patients who relapsed after their previous course. In other words, they became undetected when they were previously treated with interferon and ribavirin, but relapsed and, and became positive after therapy was discontinued.